Hello and welcome. My name is Kelly. I own Dog Kind Training. We specialize in building confidence in very fearful dogs, feral dogs, puppy mill rescues, former street dogs. And today I will be talking more about how to help your dog stay more engaged in training if they tend to be distracted, struggle focusing, or perhaps too anxious to listen to you. Distracted during training, what to do part four. A little review here, who is this for? This is for you if you feel stuck in training with your fearful dog, in part because they seem distracted a lot of the time or disengaged or like they're being stubborn perhaps, and maybe your dog doesn't seem very food motivated. Anxiety can often be mistaken for quote unquote distraction. Signs to look for include hesitation to respond to cues or refusal to respond to cues hesitation to eat or inconsistent eating of treats, looking away from you like they're interested in something over there, but there's maybe not anything to look at over there. Um, this photo on the right is an example of what that could look like if you're trying to get your dog's attention and they just turn their head away. And turning to other activities instead of engaging in the training session, like sniffing the ground, scratching themselves, or wandering away. If this sounds familiar, what should you do? If you know your dog is fearful, anxious, or otherwise sensitive, I would assume that your dog could be uncomfortable and that could be the reason why they're struggling to stay engaged in the training session. I recommend taking video of your training session. Make sure you can see your dog and you and the surrounding environment in the frame when you take video and look for clues. What happened just before your dog kind of checked out of the training session? If this is new behavior, if your dog used to do much better in training and now they're struggling, one thing to think about is whether or not they may be suffering from some kind of physical pain or discomfort. Go to your vet and have them checked for that. Once you have cleared them, if they're physically healthy and you've taken some video, create a list of potential things that could be making it harder for your dog to focus in training and try changing those one thing at a time. Now, if you're not sure where to start, what might be making training hard for your dog, that's where this series of videos comes in. In part four today, I'll be talking about what you're asking your dog to do and what you are rewarding or reinforcing with your treats and how that can affect whether or not your dog works with you enthusiastically or not. So if your dog is struggling to focus and is often distracted or stressed during training, think about asking for less. You can't reinforce what your dog won't do. So say you're asking your dog to sit or to look at you and they're just not doing it in the training session. Well, then you can't reinforce it, but there's almost always something you can reinforce. For instance, will your dog even eat in this context? If they'll eat, go ahead and reinforce that. That's a very important behavior without which you will struggle to successfully train your dog using food. Now, if your dog will not eat in your training context, then I recommend going back and looking at the previous videos in this series and think about changing the location of training, how you're interacting with your dog in training. Often food refusal is a reflection of a pretty high level of anxiety. If your dog is eating well and you can reinforce that, what else does your dog offer you? What else do they do in the training context that is okay with you if they can't do the full behavior you were looking for? For instance, it's common for a lot of you in my audience to be trying to train your dog to approach you. They're kind of nervous about people and they're not, in, and they don't enthusiastically approach you when you call them. Maybe your dog is a little bit nervous to approach you or other family members in some contexts. And let's say you want to work on that, but your dog won't approach, but they will look at you. That's something you can reinforce. Go ahead and start with that. Toss them a treat. And can your dog do a smaller piece of the final behavior? So for that approach example, they won't come all the way up to you, but oh, they took one step toward you, reinforce that. Another common example that may resonate with you is harnessing. If you have a dog who's afraid of the harness, if you try to harness them, they back away and run away. You can't really reinforce standing still for harnessing right now, that's too much. But if your dog will approach the harness or sniff the harness, if you're not moving it, start there. That's something you can reinforce and you need it to build on to the full harnessing behavior. I have a few examples to sort of make this more concrete. 
ways of asking for less so that you can have success in your training session and keep your dog working with you. Another common request amongst those of you in the audience with really fearful dogs is how do I get my dog to take treats from my hand or at least take treats from my hand consistently? With my little dog Pancake, when I had him in our home for the first several months, not only would he not eat for my hand, he wouldn't eat when I was in the same room with him. But as we began to make progress in the general direction of eating in my presence and eating when my hand was sort of in the picture, one step that I worked on that I was able to reinforce to then build on later toward working, toward eating out of my hand was pancake sniffing the treat in my hand briefly. So let's take a look at the video of that. Okay, so here's little pancake. I have just walked into the room. He sat up. I'm going to show him a treat in my hand. When he sniffs it, I'm just going to drop it for him and move my hand away. So that was an intermediate step toward getting him to take treats from my hand. Another ask for less example, ways that you can reinforce a smaller piece of what you're looking for ultimately in terms of training, would be that example of a dog who won't tolerate harnessing, but maybe they'll approach and sniff the harness when it's not moving. Here's an example of that step. This is an old training video, and here the harness is being held perfectly still. The dog sniffs it, approaches and sniffs, and then they get a treat away from the harness, and then they'll get the chance to approach it again. So this would be a an exercise that you could do with a dog who isn't ready to have you hold up the harness and put it on them, <laughs> but you, you need something, um, you want to start working toward that. So approach and sniff. And a third example of asking for less to keep your dog engaged in training. If you have a dog who won't go for a walk, say around the block or in your neighborhood, or at least won't do so comfortably or terribly willingly, that maybe that's just too much right now. What can you reinforce? Perhaps you can reinforce a smaller piece of a walk, like looking out the door, stepping out the front door. Here's an example of that with little pancake early on. Um, he was too afraid to go for a walk, but he was pretty happy to look out the front door and I would just toss treats to him. So he's just eating in the house and then stepping out over the threshold was another behavior he offered that I could reinforce. So if you are following along with this series and you want to take some concrete action and help your dog make more progress in training, consider reinforcing eating as the target behavior in a training context before asking for more behavior, especially if your dog is struggling in the current training context. Watch your dog carefully and see what else you can reinforce, other behaviors that they offer or they show you, even if it's not what you had in mind when you went into the training session. Or think about the big picture behavior you're trying to train and then back it up and think, what is a small piece of this that I could reinforce now to start making progress toward the end goal? I hope this helped. I'd love to hear from you if you have tried any of these tips and it made a difference. Don't forget to get on the list to get invited to some free live workshops I'll be giving in late August 2024. The link is at the bottom here, dogkindtraining.com slash confidence. I'll also place this link below wherever you're watching this video. These will be a series of four short workshops over Zoom on confidence building in fearful dogs. All right, everyone, I will see you next time.